I'll make a motion on approving the agenda. Who makes a motion? I didn't bring my agenda. I'll bring you up one. Want to make a made the first for second yeah. for the day. Approving the agenda. Oh. Who wants to second the agenda? I second. Okay. All in favor of or discussion? And, and all in favor of? Aye. Okay. Aye. Okay. Okay, first thing on the agenda is a review of the three phase approach in the water facility plan by JEB submitted to DEQ and what that means going forward. Great. Um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for coming out here. Oh, yeah. With us. It's great. I really it's a beautiful it. day. Thanks for having me. We appreciate it. So I wanted to I want to clarify something. Um, we have a whole bunch of background. Uh, Larry, I think you've seen that. Ted, you've seen it. Calvin, you've seen it. But you haven't seen. Uh, have you seen all of it? This. What I might do. Oh, is she was here when you. Uh, yeah, I attended okay. at the yeah. meetings, and I've gone through this beautiful so, thing. Yeah, did you read the whole thing? I went through a lot of it. I oh, good. Say I read the whole thing. If you're if you're okay, what I'd like to do is go back through all the slides and just do a quick refresher. It's been last time I was here was March. I know you haven't done the last. I have not seen this. Oh, good. Well, let's, let's go. Why don't you come up? No, I I'm not really. Well, you know, no, right? really, I'm fine. Why don't you come over here? Because I can actually project the slides. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. 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 <laughs> you should be able to take more than one yellow today. All right. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is uh, share my share the presentation so everybody can see it, and that'll be on in the Zoom world as well as here. Um, I'm having a little trouble seeing where I'm going. Here we go. And we want that. Okay, so everybody can kind of see that, right? I've got my screen a little bit in the way, but that's so the camera's there. So what I'm going to do is just go through these. Um, I think I can actually go to a projector mode here. I'm going to risk this. Great. So you won't be able to see the other folks on there, but you can see the whole presentation. So I just wanted to give a quick update about how we got to where we are, because there have been lots of um, there have been lots of back and forth, and I think we've got most things worked out right now. But I'll just give you a quick overview. Please stop me at any time, and I'll answer questions. Uh, so we've got really. Can everybody see that? I know my computer's a little bit in the way. We really have five things we're trying to do: overview of facility planning, the known deficiencies, the system uh, issues and goals. The project alternatives and then next steps and i'll go through those pretty quickly but again slow me down but today the real goal is to update the board on on where we've been and where we're going so i don't think there's anything else that you want out of this meeting is that right mm -mm. okay good so a couple things uh, facility planning overview the goal is to identify and address deficiencies um, about halfway through the project, we uh, DQ went through and did a sanitary survey and identified additional deficiencies. Those have all been addressed here. The cost opinions are designed to set a budget. There's been a lot of discussion here in Bayview about um, whether that's a bid or what that is. All it is trying to set a budget so you can pass a bond or do whatever you need to do there. Uh, the board will need to choose an alternative. And at this point, you've already selected that alternative E. Uh, but you, what you'll do next is you get public comment, and then, then you'll do your final selection based on that. And I'll talk through that still, and then the public has an opportunity to comment on that. So there are really three main deficiencies in the system. One is your non-revenue water. That's, read that as water leakage. Uh, the second one is low water pressure and uh, fire flow. So those are parts of the system that don't have big enough pipes or enough pressure. And then finally, long-term maintenance or reliability. And that's where the tank and some of the DEQ issues come in. So I'll go through each one of those as we go. Um, is, does this work for you guys where you can look mm -hmm. at that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So first of all, there's a lot of water that gets lost in Bayview. Now I will say, since Bob has been working on this, it's gotten a lot better. So some of what you're going to see here is older information. We just don't have newer information to add to it. Oh, and then we figured something else out, too. 
Oh, good. That uh, for the uh, condos, the meter is uh, in cubic feet, and everybody's been reading it as just in, in gallons. Or, oh, nice. or thousands of gallons. So there's a uh, so that's an eight fold there, there's a seven seven and a half uh, uh, factor in there. So I think they were using. Like, I mean, you can you know, clarify that we were reading it in cubic feet, but the software program didn't convert it to gallons. Right. So we were reading it. Yeah, right. we were reading it right, but, got, the, but the conversion right. wasn't right. So there was like a uh, over the two year period that I looked at, there was like a three million, three and a half million. Gallon difference. Well, that's wow. really helpful. Yeah. Well, that's and that'll be important in our conversation because some of the pipelines that we think might be leaky may not be leaky, um, and they're not all being replaced. So that might give more more support to not replacing them. So that's good. Uh, we know that we got some leaking transmission mains in the Farragut area, but maybe not as much as we thought. Uh, the Navy base is unmetered, and we just don't know the use unless we know. I know you guys have been working on that, so I don't know if we know more. And, of course, the Navy's been working at getting a meter in there, I think, but I don't know. So we can talk about that. Right. I know I've seen some plans uh, way back when I first got elected, but I haven't seen anything pursued, so nothing's <laughs> really gone beyond that. We're waiting for the facilities plan, kind of. Right. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, let's, let's, because that's a big detail we want to make sure we get taken care of here. Uh, some old, some aging meters, and meters never read high. They only read low and lower. So the older they get, the less they read. Um, there are known leaks in distribution system. You found some. And they're just areas we know are leaky. And then, of course, the issue with the well pump pre -loop. So the way a well uh, works is when you kick it on, you've got the shaft that goes down, but you don't want the metal to scrape on the metal. So we put water back down the hole when we first started up, and that lubricates the shaft. Well, what happened here is that's only supposed to run for uh, 20 minutes. It depends anywhere from 5 to 40 minutes, right. depending on how you set it. And here it was running 24-7. Right. So you had 35 gallons a minute going 35? Yeah, 35, 33, 35, yeah. Going so it worked out to be about a million and a half gallons a month. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it worked out to be. So a lot of water. So, Bob, what is that 50% close Well, to let me, because I have an update as of today on this, too, because, there, see, we did find that. We did find a million and a half gallons. Unfortunately, our system is getting leakier. And what I did this morning that took a lot of time was I went through and converted all those cubic foot meters over the wintertime and figured it all out and calculated it out. Right now, at about 62% on account of Florida water loss. So we had our first meter reading we had here at the end of April, and I calculated <coughs> it out for this. So we're still at 62%. And again, that doesn't include the Navy, of course, but yeah. we're not maybe using that much. But that's really getting our figures tight with all the commercial readings through the winter time, and, and converting all the cubic foot meters, and then taking comparing the wells with the meters from basically September the 30th to um, the 28th of April. Okay, so, and 62. You have that report? Yeah, you, Jesse, did you send out the packet yet? I have not. Okay, I guess you haven't seen it. I'm sorry. Maybe that's pre information you'll be seeing when you get the packet out. Are you spoiled it? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Um, that'll be going out later today before I leave right. the office. So yes, we did find leaks, but I think there's there's more there's that are developing. It's just, just getting older. Yeah. So and leakage like that, so just to give you an idea of the range of normal <coughs> leakage, typically a really, really tight system would be five to ten percent uncounted water. Um, pretty normal in Idaho is twenty, twenty-five percent. Sixty-two percent is really uh, there's some that are worse, but not very many. So that's a lot of leakage. And our, my belief is it's not everywhere in the system. You've got a couple of major leaks somewhere. Cape Horn is pretty tight because we have meters going out there and it matches up pretty well. Okay, so you know that for yeah. sure. It's, it's pretty much in the Okay. Um, so this is a, an image of what the tank levels do over time. And what we did was, as part of this early facility plan was monitor... What happened, we turned the pumps off and we monitored the tank level at, during the night to see how much leakage there was. And the generally between midnight and 4 or 5 in the morning, you shouldn't see very much usage. And we actually saw quite a bit. This is not during irrigation season. And so you, what we saw was something like 100 gallons a minute of loss during that time. There are two, there are two things that could be. Uh, partly it was a pre-loop, so three things. Partly pre-loop. It could be leaks, and it could be um, 
if for some reason the naval base had a lot of water, it's just something that's unneeded. We don't know where it's going. But that's a pretty significant loss for that time of night. So that's what made us think that there was quite a bit of leakage. And just so the board knows now, the prelude is metered. <laughs> that's when we discovered that. We put a meter on that prelude so we can tell how much we're putting back down the hole. Yeah, good. So that's all figured in that calculation that I gave you. And that yeah, was well seven. Good stuff. I'm sorry. Well seven, right? Well seven. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Got it. Good. Okay. Uh, so we think more. Go Bob. Go Bob. Yeah. Uh, so we think probably at least when we did this, there was about fifty million gallons a year that was disappearing, and that doesn't mean it wasn't. It was all leakage. Some of it could be meter readings, because uh, anytime. You have older meters, there's going to be some error between what the meter reads and how much, it, how much water actually flowed through. Prelude, all kinds of things could contribute to that. Can I have one thing to that, Steve? And that yeah, is for the, for the board here. Until we were able to get meter readings, custom meter readings down into one day and compare it with the wells, before this, for the years, they never had a comparison. Because if you don't read it in the same day, there's no way to compare it between the wells are producing and we're two, two or three days to read meters. So. There was no history of that over the years of being able to compare that until the last two and a half years. That's a really good point because yeah. remember what we're doing is we get uh, daily well production, but when we look at meter readings from the houses, mm -hmm. those are only read a month every month and not over the winter. Right. And so you get we, we average out, we look at the production, but it's all in big averages. Right. So and generally for leakage that's okay, but if you had one big usage somewhere, it doesn't show up. Um, uh, is that okay for leakage? Can I move on to low pressure? So low pressure, uh, really the north side of Bayview, you know, obviously that's kind of higher area. That's got some low pressures. The Dromer area, because you've got um, that little pump station pumps up to a little tank and has small pipelines. And then the Cape Horn area has some lower uh, pressure and some, and some uh, reduced fire flow. Now there are areas of Cape Horn that are super high. There's some up uh, Right. Well, um, tonight we got that four inch range got knocked down. And the thing about, well, I've kind of pursued with a uh, contractor to look at repairing that. Yeah. And um, I know there's people that were questioning whether that would fix anything. And I know it's not going to fix pressure, but I know it's going to fix flow. It'll fix fire flow. It'll yes. help. It'll help. I'll fix it. But right. Always better. It's now, always which better. four inch is that? The one that's basically uh, it's about. With 5,000 foot or no, 500 foot of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, in, in between the two six inch lines. Yeah, between the two six inch lines. Yeah, but, but that's only part of it. Uh, not only is that a four inch line and it should be a six inch line, yeah. but we've got two pumps that are pumping two inches, two inch iron pipe to that four yeah. inch. And that, that would only fill half of that four inch. Right, and that's and let, let's keep that thought because when we look at some of the improvement options, one of those is to replace that four inch, eliminate the pump station, and then that would solve some of that problem. Right. But you're right, we've got tiny pipes going to small pipes going to bigger pipes. And, and that's 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 basically the, the main problem there is the is the size of the piping and and the, and those two those two. Pumps only had the capability of producing 50 gallons a minute. Yeah. Just too much I mean, it's, it's silly. Yeah, they were designed for just domestic just, water usage, and they and, did everything as cheaply as they could. Tiny tank, low on, low on the hill. And, 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 and it was really designed just to fill the, fill the tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah just to give some operating depth. Mm -hmm. yeah. And some consistency for pressure. Yeah, to moderate pressures, yeah. Um, so then, uh, and then Dromore has that tank that's 11,000 gallons. What you're supposed, what uh, the fire, uh, uh, fire marshal, fire chief, fire marshal here, wants is to be able to provide enough fire flow that you've got adequate water storage, and that's really 1,500 gallons a minute down low, and then 500 up above, and you're not, that 11,000 gallons doesn't even come close. <clears throat> Any questions on? Any of that? Oh, we, we talked a little bit about Dromore. 11,000 gallons built in the 70s. It's just too low, too small. There's well, really but, very little value here. But, but when it, if, if we did need the fire flow, 
Mm-hmm. And and you know that isn't going to keep up. But but by making these changes, we would have two pumps with the capability of of uh, pumping uh, uh, 1,500 gallons a minute. Oh, you think you replace the Drummore pump station with bigger pumps? Uh, no, no. I'm saying the Drummore station is down, so we're calling for more water. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that pump has ability to, to kick kick up to 750 gallons a minute. The main well pump. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and it's going to go to the lowest possible level rather than pump it up into the tank. That's right, yeah. And, and if we had an emergency like that, we could kick on the other uh, a pump with 750 gallons. Well, eight, yeah. And so we would have at that point 1,500 gallons of coming right out of the well. Uh, that wouldn't right. work. Okay. And the reason why I say that is because it's, those pipes only hold so much water. So, right. so one pump pumping water is going to still keep that that pipe filled. So you're not putting more water no. in, into right. that pipe. But and, and, and so it and 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 it can only go to a certain pressure. And uh, so you're not going to get anything by turning the second pump on. Okay. Well, let me, can I get you guys to one? That, okay, let's, hold that, let's hold that conversation because I think this is really good. Yeah, I, a, a map that will make this conversation easier. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I think the real issue with Drumwar is the existing tank is about 20 feet taller, 20 something feet taller. Uh, um, yeah, it's uh, 20. You're talking about the Drumwar tank, right? Well, the difference between the Drumwar tank and the Barrigan tank. I don't remember the exact elevation difference on it. But I know that in order to get the proper pressure, it has to be significantly higher than that. Yeah. So our regular tank is, is 2430. And I can't remember what the drum. I yeah, think I it's 2411. So that would make it. I can look it up real quick here. Yeah. Well, then, then. It's only 19 feet. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, yeah. But it, but it should still eventually, long. yeah. Shut it up. So that's a drum more tank. Um, and then what really happens, the peak hour pressure, what we're trying to identify here is anything that's red, any red dot means we don't have adequate pressure. Anything that's green is good. Anything yellow is okay, but on the higher end. And really anything that's magenta is starting to be really high pressure, over 110 PSI. So you can see that anything that's running along <clears throat> the um, north side of town, some of Cape Horn, has got low pressure. And then anything that's right along the lake, because you've got the uh, pump station that goes up to the Cape Horn, that means that the pressures down along the bottom part are relatively high. And I think down there, people have some uh, local pressure reducing valves on there just to keep them yeah. blowing up hot water tanks. The individuals have uh, have uh, WFPs and, 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 and so do so does, I mean, not WFP, but uh, uh, cotton reducers. Yeah. And, and a lot of the individual homes out on the Cape. Yeah, and it makes sense. And it's just hard. Anytime you have a steep hillside like that, I understand why it's like this. It says here the tank level is 2385. Now, I don't know for these old plans if that's the top or the bottom of the tank. On the plans, it says 2385. Wait a minute, excuse me. 22. Yeah, 2385. On drawer? On drawer, huh? Okay. Now it could be the ten, another sixteen feet up. And yeah, it's it at uh, uh, twenty-four one or something. Like that. And that matches what I was saying. It's twenty something. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, and then maximum day fire flow. What we're shooting for is five hundred gallons a minute and fifteen hundred. Anything that's red is uh, um, going to be less than five hundred gallons a minute, so not very much. And Ted, like you were saying, you've got these really small pipelines up around Drumwar. You just can't get that water through. Uh, most of the system is between 500 and 1,000, and down in this lower part of the uh, Bayview, you can get up to close to 1,500 gallons. That's about 1,300 gallons a minute. So you've got all the supply coming plus the tank. That gives you that lower pressure zone, gives you quite a bit of flow. And the last piece is long term maintenance and reliability. Um, the system has been uh, as you know, all was built mostly in the 40s. There have been some things that were done in the mid 70s, 
uh, for the most part, um, the district's been able to keep things running, but not a whole lot of investment has happened since then. But most, most, most of our water system was put in in the 70s. We are using the... The 40s period. Yes, you know, so. the 40s stuff up in the park. Yeah, I'm sorry. So the well and the tank, those date, those date back to the 40s. But right. Then most of the pipeline stuff is that 70s. Yeah. So um, based on all that, we do. you've got backup power at well 7, but it's manual. And so you need something automatic. If you lose power, it needs to kick on itself. Um, pretty clever. The military used torpedo tubes for surge protection on the discharge side of the wells. And really, that's just so that when you have a surge of water, it gets, there's air in there, and it kind of uh, uh, cushion. moderates the cushions. It. Thank you. Perfect. Um, that's not okay anymore. The SCADA system, how you control the system, the, that's uh, uh, older. It needs some, some updates to make it more, work more effectively, especially so the operators can keep track of what's happening around the system. 